Hello friends and welcome to Smart Coach. Today we will be talking about the Indian Renaissance or the socio-religious socio-religious reforms of this period. All right. Now, uh, before we proceed into this topic, let me first uh, tell you that this topic is going to be a very vast topic because there are certain sections to be dealt with, it, with this topic. So, we will subdivide this topic. Okay, This is part 1 and in part 1, we are going to look into certain aspects of the Indian Renaissance because uh, I will have to give you first a basic idea about uh, Renaissance, the concept of Renaissance and then we will proceed into the Indian Renaissance. We will look into uh, the causes of the Indian Renaissance and then again, we will look into the nature, the uh, the 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 achievements of the Indian Renaissance and we will also have to talk about the limitations all right so uh, because there are so many aspects to talk about we will uh, do this video in parts all right now uh, so having said that this will be part one of course and first let us take up some basic ideas as far as basic ideas are concerned let us see what Renaissance is, Renaissance is all right what is Renaissance Renaissance is basically it is a it is a word of French origin. Uh, it signifies rebirth. All right. Now in Europe, this particular word is associated with a period in Europe which uh, represents the rebirth, the rebirth or reemergence, emergence of Europe from the middle ages all right it is associated with a period in europe which is, uh, which signifies the rebirth or re emergence of europe from the dark ages of the uh, of the medieval period all right and this is characterized by developments in aspects of culture all right this period in europe is characterized by developments in the aspect of european culture so such aspects of european society as the arts literature and architecture all right which is particularly seen in the European country of uh, Italy, especially in the Italian uh, city states such as Venice. All right, so uh, we can see the development of art, literature, and architecture there, and from that we can see that Europe has finally emerged from the Dark Ages, a period of feudalism, and it is soon going to move into the period of uh, capitalism and the new uh, modern world. All right, so this is basically what Renaissance stands for. In India, the Renaissance, the concept of the Indian Renaissance, it is it. it is uh, it is illustrating a period in the 19th century all right which starts in the early 19th century okay early parts of 19th century and then it goes on to the early decades of the 20th century okay so this is a particular period in india which again can be seen as an indian renaissance all right and this uh, per period in india is also characterized by social development in india okay so indian society uh, uh, developmental prog progress takes place in Indian society, okay? So, this is very important and this developmental progress in Indian society is specially carried out. This period is characterized by wide-ranging social developmental activities by certain uh, religious and social or social religious all right, reform movements, okay? reform movements and in most cases these reform movements are headed by certain personalities very important personalities in the history of india because it is through these personalities that indian society gets reformed in this era all right and there is uh, we can see that a all round cultural and societal progress takes place in this particular uh, particular time in the history of india okay so this is the concept of renaissance when india is also concerned it is characterized by a period of social reforms which are carried out in india through socio religious reform movements all right and through societies and organization which are both uh, which both concentrate on society and religion so therefore it is known as socio religious okay it is a combination of societal concerns and religious concerns so though those organizations and those individuals that come up in this period and who work for the development of indian society they are concerned in the development of Indian society, but through the perspective of religion. All right. Now, 
since I've given you the basic idea, you will have to grasp on to this particular idea in order to understand the other parts that I will be talking about. These reforms are concerned about the reforming Indian society. Okay, the reformers are very much into uh, very much into uh, reforming Indian society, but these reforms they come through religion all right they use the socio-religious reform movements uh, and the socio-religious reformers they use religion in order to reform society so this is something that you have to basically carry on in your mind in order to understand the later parts all right so this is the very basic idea of the what the socio-religious reform movement and the indian renaissance is it is a period characterized by social development in india the period starts in the 19th and the 20th century it is a period which is also characterized by socio-religious reform movements all right so so this is what the Indian Renaissance it, it, uh, is. It saw all round development in the cultural aspects of India, especially also in the literary aspects of India, which we have covered when we have talked about vernacular literature. Because in vernacular literature, there is a special section in which I talk about the different kind of literature associated with the socio-religious reformers. Okay, So you can check out that portion also uh, from our videos. All right. So now let us go into certain aspects of the Indian Renaissance. First aspect that we should talk about the Indian Renaissance is the causes of its emergence. So why does the socio-religious reform movements take place in India? Now this question is pertinent because of the fact that in the 17th and the 18th century, starting in the later part of the 16th century itself, we see that India had started to stagnate. Indian society and Indian religions had started to become more and more uh, proscriptive. All right. Remember this word more and more prohibitive. All right. Prohibitive. And also Indian society and Indian religion has become rigid. All right. There has, uh, uh, you see, uh, there has seeped in some kind of rigidity in Indian religions and this rigidity, by this rigidity I talk about or I am referring to the caste system and the ritualistic, ritualistic nature, alright, ritualistic nature of Indian religion, alright. So the caste system becomes more rigid and the rituals become more and more pronounced and more and more intrinsic and more and more prohibitive, alright. The rituals become very, very rigid in this period. Also, during this period, starting from the 16th century itself, we can see that 16th, 17th and 18th century, in this period, we also see that Indian society becomes a society which is obscurantist, Obscurantist and by obscurantist, by this word, we mean that a society which does not look at natural phenomena in order to explain it, but looks at natural phenomena through a through, uh, you see, through an uh, through a perspective of awe and through a perspective of disbelief, through a perspective of being uh, thunderstruck by natural phenomena. They are not trying to rationalize natural phenomena. Suppose an earthquake happened, so a supernatural uh, position will be taken up. All right, this is obscuring the real reason of why the earthquake happened. All right, rather than looking at the earthquake through a perspective of awe, uh, they are obscuring it. Therefore, Indian society in itself was described or is described as obscurantist during this period. Okay. Going on from here, we also see obscurantism, of course, it will devolve into superstition. Okay. And also during this period, because of the ritualistic nature of Indian religions, especially Hinduism and Islam, we see that certain evils seep into Indian society. Okay. So untouchability, untouchability, it becomes rampant in this period. Although it was already there, it becomes rampant in this period. We see that the position of woman, it has declined to a very, very, very significant, uh, you see, uh, level. Okay. So there is female infanticide. Okay. Female infanticide. And uh, we also see that widow, uh, you say the lives of wid widows. Lives of widows is pitiable because they are not allowed to remarry. All right, certain uh, social religious reformers uh, they uh, you say specifically fight for the widow remarriage act. All right, which ag again comes to fruition. We will talk about all of those things later. But lives of widows is especially hard, and not because they are just not allowed to remarry, but there is also. The prevalence of sati in this period. Sati pratha, you understand what sati is. Sati is the tradition of burning the widow at the uh, funeral pyre of the husband. All right. So at the funeral pyre of the husband, the widow is forcefully burned and sometimes the widow goes to burn herself by her own accord. All right. So these kind of traditions are going on in India. Okay. So female infanticide, the prevalence of sati, the prevalence of parda. 
parda all of these uh, all of these rituals are present in indian society apart from that of course we have already talked about untouchability okay so the caste system is also very rigid okay during this period so all of these evils are part of indian society during the 16 17 18th century okay so in the 19th century all right by the 19th century we already see that contact with britain has been established the british are now ruling over india first through uh, first through the company that is the east india company and then later going on to the rule of the british parliament over india the rule of the british monarch over india okay so the britain uh, british are uh, have established the rule over india and this brings about certain change all right so we have gotten a background we have seen uh, the causes now as far as the causes are concerned so therefore if we ascribe a number one cause to the rise of the social reform movements in india the rise of the indian renaissance it is because of the nature of indian society itself okay nature of indian society so nature of indian society as far as that is concerned i already gave you a brief overview now it is because of this that the need for reform had arose all right in a good society of course you don't need reforms all right the devolving nature of indian society itself was crying out for reform okay it is because of this the social religious reform movement takes place during this particular period of time now proceeding forward from there from that assumption we also have to see how does it reform okay itself so indian society how does it reform itself in that case colonialism is the key to answer that question and it gives us our second cause okay so colonialism itself the colonial milieu in which these particular reforms took place okay the colonial society in which these particular reforms take place it has a very deep imprint upon the uh, socio religious reform movements all right so as a cause it is also very pertinent how does it influence the rise of the socio religious reform movements as far as colonialism is concerned contact with britain all right this uh, new uh, uh, this new established government of british government in india okay it results in a feeling of inferiority inferiority results in a feeling of inferiority of india all right and it is a direct result of what direct result of a primarily racist philosophy all right primarily racist philosophy which is manifested by the by the missionaries in india okay now we'll explain the linkages properly now uh see uh india although at one point of time we cannot say that culturally india was inferior than britain or britain was uh, inferior than india although at a certain time in the medieval period india and uh, england both had the same kind of cultural uh, you see developments or maybe we can even consider india as a better uh, culturally more, more better than the west okay at a certain point in medieval india or in ancient india however by this point of time india uh, in uh, india when compared to britain was distinctly uh, had suffered all right had distinctly declined indian society was distinctly uh, inferior to that of british society if we evaluate it through the perspective of modernity indian society had not modernized all right and it is because of this that there was a sense of inferiority among certain sections of india and this sense of inferiority was again fostered by colonial policies itself the missionaries who were spreading christianity in india they constantly criticized the nature of indian society they constantly criticized the indian religions all right and by doing that they instilled a, a feeling of inferiority apart from that colonialism itself was based upon an ideology which focused on the argument that indian society is a declining society indian society is a, a crystallized society and it is by the rule of the british uh, over india india will be able to civilize itself again so uh, the argument of the white man's burden now this comes into play when it comes uh, when it uh, comes to colonialism in india okay so it was the burden of the white man in uh, to civilize india okay so with these kind of arguments there was of course distinctly and inferiority complex within india all right so this is one of the reasons why uh, yeah, how it affects uh, the rise of the indian uh, uh, indian renaissance in, uh, okay during this period but then of course colonialism also provides us with the tools through which this uh, new renaissance takes place in india it also provides us with the material tool 
or the intellectual tool with which to bring about this reform of Indian society. We know that nature of Indian society has declined. We know that uh, there is inferiority complex within India among certain sections. But colonialism, it provides the way by which reform of Indian society can also take, pl uh, take place. And this is because of what? Modern education and ideas. Now remember, most of the socio-religious reforms that take place uh, okay, are, uh, uh, are uh, guided by people who are educated or who are educated by or in modern ideas okay? and in modern uh, you see, sciences and rationalism. Okay, so modern science, modern rationalism, and the age of reason, all right, all of this profoundly affect the rise of the social religious reform movements in India. And this was a, uh, this was a, uh, a distinctly added element in Indian society by colonialism. So, who introduced uh, modern society, uh, modern ideas, and modern education in India? It was, of course, our colonial masters who did that. And these ideas were absorbed by certain sections of Indian society and they then started to working on reforming Indian society. So if we count the causes of the coming up of uh, social religious reform movements in India, the spread of modern education and the spread of modern ideas, ideas especially based on enlightenment. Enlightenment. So the ideas of philosophers such as Rousseau, Okay, ideas of philosophers such as Rousseau, Montesquieu, Descartes. Okay, so ideas of these kind of philosophers and ideas based on liberty, equality, and fraternity, which were contributions of the French Revolution, these ideas had seeped into Indian society because of the coming of modern education and because of the coming of modern ideas into India through colonialism. Therefore, if we are discussing the causes for the rise of uh, uh, social religious reforms and the Indian Renaissance, okay, we will have to attribute to colonialism these particular points, okay, the inferiority complex because of the policies, the policies of uh, colonialism, the ideological backbone of colonialism and also the introduction of modern education and ideas in India. But apart from that, that colonialism also affects India in this period through another perspective and that is Orientalism. This is also the period in which ancient past of India, ancient past of India is being discovered. So it is during this period that the ancient past of India is being discovered and it is being discovered by whom? By the Orientalist, okay? And they are based upon a philosophy which is Orientalism, okay? So when the Orientalists came into India or when the Britishers actually came into India, they wanted to know about India's past because they wanted to rule India or govern India through its own laws and customs. And in order to do that, they had to look back into India's past and they had to see how hard Indian society in the past used to look like. Okay, And it is through these laws and customs which they sought to recover from Indian past, they wanted to rule over India. This is the philosophy behind Orientalism. Okay, And in doing so, they rediscovered India's past. They rediscovered people like Ashoka about whom, the knowledge about whom had been lost, okay, it had been rediscovered, Osoka was rediscovered, his importance was rediscovered only after the Brahmi script was deciphered and the Osokan, Asokan edicts were deciphered, alright, and societies such as the Asiatic Society of Bengal, Asiatic Society of Bengal was very important in this rediscovery of India's past and by rediscovering India's past, again, they instilled a feeling of positivity positivity about Indian culture, okay, it installed a feeling of confidence among certain sections of India who were modern educated, who could understand the importance of this rediscovery of India, alright, among them a feeling of positivity was instilled by these works of the Orientalists and they picked it up, 
they picked it up and they used it all right these modern educated indians all right they picked it up and they used it as the basis of the socio religious reform all right they looked at a glorious past of india glorious past of india they looked at a glorious past of india and by stressing upon the point that india at a certain moment in its past was really mighty and glorious and that now it has declined but we as the society as parts of part of indian society have the right and also the duty to make india glorious again all right this was their argument to find this lost glory of india all right so this was what they tried to do okay so in this respect the rise of orientalism is very important in india the rediscovery of india's past is also very important when it comes to the indian renaissance so these are broadly speaking some of the most important causes when it comes to the rise of indian renaissance and the rise of socio religious reform movement the first cause nature of indian society itself okay because of which uh, uh, because of which we developed an inferiority complex all right an idea of inferiority when compared with colonial britain all right and because of this inferiority there was uh, because of this perception of inferiority there was a need for reform again modern education all right and modern ideas it brought india at par all right it brought certain sections of india when it uh, when ideologically speaking and when intellectually speaking it brought certain sections of india at par with the thinking process with rational process of britain or of the east or sorry the west all right and it is through these personalities that we see the rise of social uh, social religious reform in india and then the discovery of ancient past of india and which the idea of which was captured by this section of indian society and then they proceeded forward with their reform activities so uh, this is the first part of our video and then we will next proceed into the second part where we look into the nature of the social religious reform movements.